Intel might have come a long way in terms of powerful integrated graphics and while we see powerful iGPUs such as the Arc 140V and 140T challenging AMD's integrated graphics such as the Radeon 890M, they are still significantly weaker than AMD's best iGPU offerings. AMD's strict Halo which has dominated the charts when it comes to the best iGPU performance is currently unbeatable and one of the primary reasons for its success is not just the excellent RDNA 3.5 architecture but also the number of GPU cores AMD has deployed on the flagship models. Compared to just 16 GPU cores on the Radeon 890M which is found on the flagship Strix Point chips, the Strix Halo APUs like the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 bring over twice the number of cores while the architecture remains the same. This is why the Radeon 8060S is able to compete even with mid-range laptop GPUs such as the RTX 4060 or in some cases the RTX 4070. But what if we could get such a high core count I GPU on the Intel CPUs as well. Well, this might come to reality if Intel decides to release the Nova Lake AX chips, which are set to be released apart from the regular Nova Lake H series. Some reports hinted that the Nova Lake AX is Intel's answer to AMD's Strix Halo and will bring a bigger iGPU and might even bring an X3D-like design to bring more L3 cache on board. Even though this isn't officially confirmed yet, the reports come from some of the most credible leakers. Now, as far as the core count is concerned, Nova Lake AX isn't going to be the top of the line offering in the next gen as Nova Lake HX or the Nova Lake S is reportedly bringing up to 52 cores. While this will surely bring superior multi-threaded performance, for stronger graphical performance Intel will focus more on the Nova Lake AX which according to the prominent leaker Raichu will have up to a staggering 384 execution units. Now if you aren't familiar with what it means then let me just put it this way. The current strongest iGP which is the ARC 140T brings only 8 x 2 cores. In each X2 core, we have 8 execution units, which means there are a total of 64 EUs on the ARC 140T. Now, if Intel's X3 based iGPU brings the same configuration, we are going to see at least 48 X3 GPU cores on the Nova Lake AX, which is 8 times higher than ARC 140T. With such an impressive core configuration, even if you ignore the generational uplifts the X3 Celestial architecture will bring to the table, the performance of Nova Lake AX iGPU will be so good that it will not just beat the Strix Halo fair and square, we may see the iGPU actually competing with modern budget and mid-range graphics cards. Now I can't just speculate the performance numbers based on this, but we could actually see something like as powerful as the RTX 5060 on a processor. Once again, if something seems too good to be true, it's likely that it may not end up becoming a reality. As Raichu said, Intel might not launch this at all and if that happens, AMD will keep its dominance in the mobile segment while Intel will be struggling to compete with Strix Halo. Moving next, we have some good news for the RTX 40 series GP owners as reportedly one can turn on the Nvidia smooth motion feature on these cards even without the official support. Nvidia's GeForce Driver 590.26 Preview is the one you will have to install for this and to get this you have two different ways. You either have an official NVIDIA developer account or you get it from GitHub where you can follow the instructions to install the driver and enable the smooth motion from NVIDIA Profile Inspector. By doing so you should be able to turn on the feature which will boost your frame rates in games that don't even support DLSS. First ever YouTube channel showcased this on the RTX 4070 Ti and saw a massive 60% boost in performance. Now that's a totally different thing how it will actually feel when compared to playing with real frame rates. The gameplay will now actually at least deliver a smoother gaming experience. However, as the driver is still in the preview mode, it is not yet stable and therefore expect some bugs here and there. As per some users, one should update their RTSS version to 7.3.7 beta 6 or later if the feature doesn't work properly. However, if you want stable performance, then it's better to wait for Nvidia to release an official driver that will support smooth motion on the RTX 40 GPUs. And lastly, some good news for AMD GPU owners as well. I don't know if this is for you, but if you're running your system on a Linux OS, then the Mesa 25.2 code branching will be extremely helpful for gaming performance. Before it goes live, open source developers have been continuously delivering patches to fix performance issues with Radeon GPUs, including those that were released nearly two decades ago. But if you own any of the Radeon RX 7000 or the RX 9000 series GPUs, 
then you should be seeing higher ray tracing performance in games. Foronix already found that with Mesa 25.2, the RX 9000 GPUs were already delivering higher ray tracing performance. But with the latest patches offered by a Valve contractor, both RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 GPUs will see a noticeable performance boost. One of the internal tests found out that in games like Quake 2 RTX, the RDNA 4 GPUs delivered up to 14% higher ray tracing performance. So if you have Linux OS on your system, you are going to see much closer RT performance to RTX 50 GPUs than ever before. But if you are using Windows then we already have decent ray tracing performance with the RX 9000 GPUs. So these were some of the top stories for today and I will be back with more in the coming days. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also subscribe if you're new here and would love to see such regular stories and I will see you in the next one.